Hello, friends. How are you? So you know that there are times in life when you have this nice kind of you planned it out and you've arrived early and you're settling in and you're all calm and today's not that day. No, 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 no. Imagine me like sliding into home base at the very last possible moment. That's much closer. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline's up. It's been uh, things that have shouldn't take that should have. See, I can't even talk. Things that should have taken about half an hour it took, you know, over an hour. It's just one of those days. Who is with me, right? Oh, goodness. So let's start at the top, shall we? Just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Chris Acton with Acting Creative, and this is Live at the Loom. Thank goodness. Thank goodness we are here. Thank goodness for Live at the Loom. I look forward to it every single week. And uh, boy, let me tell you how much I need Live at the Loom today. I need you guys today for sure. It's just been a lot. And please, everyone, uh, say hi and welcome the fabulous Lori, our gatekeeper, who is keeping us all safe in our virtual space. Thank you, Lori. We love you and you do amazingly good work. Thank you so much. So let's, uh, let's see who has joined us today. I see Ernie and Connie and Gemma is here. Excellent. Who else is on? I love, I love a lot all my early birds. They're awesome. Hello, Carrie in Spain. She says, warm, sunny spring day here in your part of Spain. Excellent. Okay, so Carrie, when you say it's warm, I'm guessing it's your version of warm is different than mine. Tell tell me how uh, how warm is warm there. Did I say Connie's here? Connie's here. Absolutely. We can't do this without Connie. Uh let's see. Jennifer Fowler is here. Uh who else is joining us? Alex Madison is here. I'm going to see her pretty soon. I'm really excited about that. Carol is here. Woo! Uh, who else is joining us? We have to bring the uh, we have to bring our Facebook friends in here. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Sherry. I'm going to see Sherry soon too. Yay! Ellen is here. Cindy is here from Prince Edward Island, which I now know when you see, when I see PEI, that's Prince Edward Island. See how much you guys teach me every single week. That is amazing. Sue Ann Sullivan is here. Sam, she's from wet and cloudy Southwest Ontario. I'm guessing that if we compared the weather in Southwest Ontario to Carrie's weather in Spain, they would be pretty polar opposite. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, let's see who else. Oh, Chris Norman is here. Hello, Chris. How are you? Uh-huh. Yeah, Ernie says he can relate. Should have gotten at least two passes done on the April Weave Along Warp Got One. I see, you you understand, Ernie. That's that is for sure. How is everyone doing this week? What uh what's happening in your corner of the world? Like I said, it's been um it's been it's been busy. All good things, honestly. It's been like that kind of exciting kind of busy, but busy still the same. Like when you slam into bed at the end of the day and you are just, you drop off into the dreamless sleep. Like that is how the week has been. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Carrie told us in Spain, she says about 84 degrees. That's uh, that's considered hot here in, uh, in Northwest Indiana. But I love that, that you're like, oh, it's a nice spring day. That's perfect. That's, uh, that's about uh, middle of July for us. That's, uh, that's good. Ernie says it's 34 in Flagstaff and sunny. Oh, that's chilly. It's 34? Wow. Uh, see, I always forget that there's such a difference in elevation in your corner of the world, Ernie. So that, uh, yeah. Thank you for the reminder. That's awesome. So yes, let me know how your week has gone, how your projects are going. Things here are good. You know, we're in the middle of the April Weave Along, which I love. This is really my favorite time where we're right kind of in the smack dab in the middle. And um, I love uh, just kind of all the excitement. Um, people are getting their looms dressed. They're already weaving the project. It's so much fun. So, uh, because it's week two of the weave along, uh, the homework for this week is to, uh, dress your loom. Uh huh. That is the homework. There we go. You got it. Aw, Maureen will miss you. She says, sorry to miss today. Have a great session. All day board meeting. Maureen has very important things to do, which is awesome. That's, uh, Maureen will miss you. Well, hopefully we'll catch you another time. Uh, Sam is here. Yay. F finished the first place mat in undulating twill. Nice. Just finished the second. Excellent. Uh, Cindy says it is 43 degrees here in Prince Edward Island. That's, uh, yeah, I think 
we had a couple of pretty nice days and then today is not not as much it's rain we're back to rain we have a lot of rain here i don't know if anyone else is getting um uh you know their front yard looks like a swamp like mine does but uh yeah mm -hmm. yes carol says she's doing well but insanely busy yes finished the cattle fence last week should anyone need to know without major injury always a bonus we were very concerned about the cattle fence last week carol that's uh that's for sure yeah oh yes our friend ellen is no longer in illinois she's on vacation in sedona yay no weaving this week thank goodness that's uh you need a break you just need lots of inspiration and art that's uh that's and if your husband has anything to do with do with it maybe a little boating something i don't know something I, I can't wait to hear how the trip is ellen please travel safe and enjoy yourself for sure all right hello lisa 65 how are you hello kim from atlanta Hello, Karen Crocker. Look at everyone coming in. This is so fun. Excellent. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> I, keep, I keep hitting things and it's not going off. Aw, uh, see, there we go. Technology. You know, you know how that works, right? By the way, I have a vaguely kind of Christmassy look today, don't I, with the green shirt and the red lips? I don't know. It was, like I said, I grabbed the first lipstick I could because I put lipstick on it about 9, 22, 23, maybe. <laughs> like I was... Did I mention I was rushing to get here? Mm -hmm. I was rushing, rushing to get here. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Carol, I'll send you some rain. No worries. I'll, uh, we'll fill up a couple buckets and uh, bring some over for you. No, uh, no problem there. Hello, Glenna. Glenna is in Montana. Oh, how are things in Montana, my friend? How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Ellen's about 30 miles from Ernie. You're so close, you're right there. That uh, yeah, Sedona is. I have I've never been to Sedona, so that's that's definitely on my list of things um, to things to do. <laughs> Carol says I look more like spring. A tulip, red and green. Oh, I'll take that. I love tulips. That's uh, thank you, Carol. That uh, that makes sense. Uh huh. Yeah, Cindy is loading a napkin for the April Weave Along. Oh, that's very cool, Cindy. Um, uh, uh, are you doing one napkin? Are you doing? I'm guessing you're doing multiples. Let uh, let us know what the plan is for your project there. That's awesome. Let me take a swig here. Okay. So, oh, Scott in Atlanta is here. Hello, Scott. How are you? Uh, right. We're happy spring is finally here. Yes. We have had, um, uh, we've had, uh, daffodils for a while now, but we're just the, the, uh, tulips are trying, they're trying to come out. Yeah. Oh, oh, I get it. See, see, not see, Red two lips, two lips. See, let's yeah, okay. I'm with you now. I slow. I'm slow on the uptake, ladies and gentlemen. But yes. Lori says today was a hot mess. Balconies a mess from all the high winds. Now as a reminder, Lori is in uh Netherlands. She said the birds moved the bamboo sticks meant to deter them. The birds have won. Ah, those birds. What uh do we, it's what I'm sure you've tried everything. Okay. You guys, if you have suggestions for Lori, she has a balcony with some beautiful plants on it, but the birds are a nuisance. Let, if you have ideas for how to, uh, how, uh suggestions for our sweet Lori, let, uh, <laughs> let her know. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Dawn from Nova Scotia. Spring is trying here, but it's been a struggle. I feel like that's how it's been here too. Mm hmm. Jennifer says the tulip show almost done. Jennifer is also many hours south of me. Yeah, irises are starting to bloom. Dogwoods are all bloomed out. How fun. Okay, so I found something the other day as I was kind of uh, putzing around. And um, <clears throat> there was a, okay, you guys have to help me here. There was a fiber magazine that no longer exists. I want to say it was called Fiber Arts. I, I don't know if that's true or not. They went um uh belly up this is probably at least 10 years ago so they're they don't exist anymore but they used to do a fiber card competition like a postcard competition where you created your own fiber postcard you sent it in and then they would mail it back to you like through the mail and um and i say competition loosely it was one of those that um they would select some to be highlighted in the magazine and um i want to say it was kind of around like valentine's day like maybe like a february issue or something like that but i found the uh my entry that was actually published as part of it and this would have been let's say well let's see if there's a date on here i think i want to say like 2008 2009 somewhere in the 2008 okay so here we go are you ready here's my here's my little entry 
Look how cute that is. And, you know, I'm not really an embroiderer or, or like stitching is not my forte, but I just, when I saw the theme, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So, I did, and then they mail it back to you. Look at all the fun. That was, that's an old address. Don't pay any attention to the address, but it says um, from uh, Love of Colorado. So maybe it was Shacked related. Maybe they, um, right? Is it Shacked or who's the publisher in um there's somebody in Colorado, love one Colorado. Anyway, so then it says from mountains high to lakesides blue, this heart's from Loveland, dear one to you. I love a good poem. But they had all the little, all the, they have the little stickers and they sent it back. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Okay. Th see, thank you, Carol. Carol says she remembers the magazine. You did a quote. Yeah. See, exactly. Okay. Everyone, uh, everyone, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, which magazine that was, um, let me know. Yeah. Anyways, I just thought that was so fun. I thought, ah, well, what's so, what's crazy is that at the time I was um, living with my sister for a short while and she kept saying, this is awesome. You should do more of this. I'm like, do you know how long it took me to make this? I am not doing more of this. <laughs> it was not, I was like, this is fine. I'm not, no, I'm not doing more of this. <laughs> Maybe if the spirit so moved me, but, um, so here's my question. First of all, if you guys know what the, uh, if you know what the magazine is, let me know. However, here's my other question. Have you ever submitted something to a fiber contest? Let me know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let, uh, let me know. Okay. Sherry chimed in and said, uh, she said, uh, she finished her weave along, but forgot to weave a hem on each side and didn't hem stitch. <laughs> Ooh, what's a Philippine edge? <gasps> Sherry, what is that? I have never heard of such a thing. You know, I, it just shows your enthusiasm. You were so, you were ready. You're like, let's go. Just forgot to, uh, no, forget those hems. Do we, do we really need hems? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, there are suggestions for Lori about her bird problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Ellen said, could be Weaver's Magazine. I feel like it was um, a broader category, Ellen. Do you remember any magazines from back then? I want to say it was fiber something. Cause I remember it wasn't just weaving. That was my, that was my thought. Anyways. Hello, Lori Klein. How are you? Yeah. Oh, Carol says lots of state fairs. Ooh, nice. I've never entered one of our little, uh, state fair competitions. Uh, anyone else? Have you done any of the, like the competitions or the contests through, um, HGA hand, hand weavers guild of America. That's the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody just curious. Anyways, I thought I would share. I thought that was fun. And that would be a little kind of conversation starter just for us. Okay. So, uh, here's the other thing that's been on the brain. My friends, she said, was it fiber fest? Oh, like that was a magazine. Is that what you mean? I don't know. Here's the other thing that's been on the brain. My friends is that, um, uh, I, we need some more studio tours. Anybody, uh, anybody feel like I, I had a couple names, I think, that I needed to circle back to, but I have lost the list. And I apologize if you were on that list. But if you um, would like to share your studio space on Live at the Loom, we're, uh, we're due. That would, be, um, that would be awesome. So you can uh, probably email me is probably the best way to do it. If you wouldn't mind, please you can do it at chris at actingcreative.net. That would be amazing. And, uh, and we'll schedule a time. Uh, you can ask, uh, Connie or Gemma or Sherry or Ellen. I promise it's not that painful. It's, uh, basically we just sit down like a couple of girls having a cup of tea and we just, uh, you know, we, we work out the tech ahead of time and we get to see your space. So, um, so send me an email if you are like, yeah, Chris, I would share my space. Thank you so much. That would be amazing. So you, uh, chew on that. Let me know if that, uh, if that fits with uh, what you got. All right. Yeah, see, I've never heard of a Philippine edge either. I'm hoping that uh, Sherry will pop back in and explain or someone who explain who knows what that is. That'd be awesome. Um, let's see. Ooh, Jennifer Fowler. Nice. We will talk. I love that. Oh, see, thank you, Connie. That's a good endorsement. I appreciate that, my friend. She made this too. See, I try. It's not supposed to be stressful. I promise. There we go. Carol says, if you can ignore the mess, the dust on the outside of the windows, Carol, we expect, we expect dust. We, that's part of, it's a requirement, honestly, for a studio tour is there to be dust. We're fiber people. There should be dust. Absolutely. Yes. 
let's see. Okay, so what was it? Karen popped in and said she um, submitted a wall quilt, was juried into a show at the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts. That's so cool, Karen. That is fantastic. Look at you. I love that. I love those uh, cheese heads up there in Wisconsin. That's, uh, that's a good state to be in for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's see. Gemma says no weaving contest that she knows of. Okay. All right. That's all right. So, um, chew on, uh, if you want to do studio tour with me, that'll be fun. We have, it's been a little bit, since we did a couple in, uh, February. We did Connie and Gemma, and Gemma in February, which is awesome. And then March, we got caught up with April Weave Along stuff, which is all good because April Weave Along is important, but I think that would be fun to bring that back in our regular rotation, right? Okay. So speaking of the weave along, let's, let's touch base for just a moment. Let me take a swig. By the way, I was in such a hurry. I did not, I didn't get the uh, mug warmer ho uh, hooked up. <laughs> that's, that's how much of a hurry I was in coming in this morning. So, um, uh, weave along. Yes. Undulating twill. How are you enjoying some undulating twill? Is it what you expected? Are you having a good time? Are you having struggles? How is it going? Uh, just to kind of coordinate with all of that, I'm going to put up a couple links for us. First of all, oh, that blue is fun. I like this new color for us. This is your uh, Weave Along Central page. So if you have questions, if you want to purchase the instructions or the yarn, or there's all kinds of information. I dumped all the stuff right in this one central spot. So this is the Weave Along Central link. Um, or, and, or I should say, uh, that we also have a Facebook group, dun, 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 dun. acting creative. We've along boy, that Facebook group is humming. We were, I think we're over 130 people at this point. And, uh, they are, they're really doing all kinds of cool stuff. So it's just so fun. I think the beauty of the Facebook group is that, you know, it's only open for a limited amount of time and we're all focused on one thing. So um, it's really, it's really fun to see all the different stages everybody's at and, uh, all those good things. So let me know how you're enjoying it. If you've started it, where you are, what, uh, what's happening there. Jody says she's late chiming in. Jody, whenever you arrive, it's perfect timing. My friend. Just having so much fun threading the heddles this morning. Lost track of time. Uh, that's good. That's a great excuse. If your excuse for coming in, you know, late for live at the loom is that you are weaving. Oh yes. That's uh don't you worry. She says she's loving the undulating twill. It's fun, right? Yeah. Sam says it looks so complex, but surprisingly easy to weave. Yes. Th thank you. That was my, that was part of the goal. That's always part of my goal. Honestly, when I create a weave along project is that, uh, it looks um, cool and complicated, but fairly easy to do. I don't always achieve that as much as I would like, but, uh, but I'm glad that's your feedback, Sam. Thank you so much. Uh, Gemma says she's debating on a white warp and blue weave or blue warp and white weft. Oh, interesting. Not sure how white make it. She's in the decision making, uh, st stage step process, something she's making decisions. That's good. Mm -hmm. Jennifer says, I feel like my warp is taking forever to wind. Jennifer, did you end up putting on, uh, quite a bit. Is it really long? Is that part of the challenge? But, uh, let me know. Uh, by the way, you know, you have a resource available to you if you need uh, help with any of that. <laughs> uh, Carol says, uh, oh, Carol uh, says it's really needed to pin. The hem edge is tedious, tight, and quite strong. Okay. I, I missed part of the reference there, but I'll trust you. Yes. Cynthia's loving it. Woohoo been good practice on controlling my beat. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. That's, um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. The beat is funny. You know, I've seen some of you kind of post about that when you do the doubles, you have to really beat lightly and the singles kind of control that, whatever. I'll be honest, folks. I didn't manage my beat. I, I didn't worry about it too much. So if you look closely, I don't think, do I have mine? Oh, I do have it close. Hold that thought. Hold please. Let's just pull out the project and see what we got here. I'm, I'm making a mess. Just projects and things went flying right here. Okay. So let's see where, um, here we are. Uh, you can see, yeah, see, this is, these are the singles and these are the doubles. These are flatter. Like I, I, mm -mm, nope. I didn't even, 
And I could tell as I was weaving that the doubles were smashing closer together just because of space, physics, because of science. Because of science, they were uh, getting closer together. But I, um, I was like, I'm not going to worry about it till I see how it comes out in the wash. And I think, um, I mean, I think it's certainly admirable if you want to make these as square as possible. But the, the truth is, folks, I don't know that it matters too much. I mean, even from a distance, they look pretty square, right? I mean, I think it's only when you get up like at the like six inch view. But if you're looking at it from, you know, two, three feet, piece of cake, piece of cake, right? You got this. Hello, Sandra Parsons. Going to enter a small extension show tomorrow. Wow, look at you. I think that's awesome. It's good to, it's good to occasionally follow someone else's parameters and have a deadline. I think, I think that's good for you. Congratulations. Lori says she finished writing this morning. Dressing was a mess yesterday. <laughs> I understand that. Boy, do I understand that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Lori. Uh, let's see. Carol says she's 24 inches into a 10 foot weave on the twill. Uh, so ten, uh, the warp is uh, 10 feet. Is that what it is? So uh, what is that? A little over three, three yards. That's, uh, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kim says she loved the project. Did make me feel cross-eyed occasionally. The cat definitely approved of the finished project. <laughs> you know what? That is important. That is important that the weaving mascots feel like they, uh, you know, that they give their, um, you know, stamp of approval. That's, that's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sherry, is this the, what is it called? Philippine edge? Is that what it was? <laughs> is that what that is, my friend? Uh, keep me posted. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Cindy says, I'm just making one napkin, so I joined the fun. Cindy, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard in my whole entire life. You're making one napkin. That is awesome. Are you doing it on a table loom? Or what kind of a loom are you working on to make one napkin? I think that's, I think that is, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard. That really, Cindy, that is awesome. You go, girl, and make one napkin. That is amazing. Uh, let's see. Connie says, I'm not sure uh, if I like the pattern 8-4. Okay, it looks too blocky and dense. Okay. Maybe when it's washed up, Connie, I'll be very curious to, to get your kind of feedback um, about how you like the eight four after it's been through washer and dryer, all of that kind of stuff. Jody says so easy at all the steps. I'm glad you think so. I'm so yes. I'm. <laughs> Joe says easier than the shadow weave. The sh I, I think I've told you this, but the shadow weave, honestly, even for me, I thought this has one too many one too many components. This is a little more complicated than I want it to be, but that's okay. You guys were troopers and you hung in there with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Karen says, I like, it's easy to read. You know, when you messed up in the sequence, visually you can tell, right? That's, I think that's a very good point. I'm glad that's been your experience for sure. Um, Lori says she finally found the cones she was looking for to use in the weave line. Good. I <laughs> like the tortoise. <laughs> Lori, one of my favorite phrases, there is no weaving police, darling. You just do it when you are ready and we will be there to cheer you on. All right. Carol says, love in the pattern. Not my choice in fiber. Okay, Carol's are amazing, but wool blend and this low humidity makes it a shocking project. Literally. Oh no. Oh, like you're getting electrical shocks. Carol. <laughs> That's not something I would have anticipated. That's very interesting. Oh no. Lori says her warping board detached from the wall and came crashing down. <laughs> that is that sounds like me. The other day I was in the I was in the shower and the and the whole shower curtain thing just decided to fall on me in the middle of it. Thank you. That's I'm awake now. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hello, Elmi from Guatemala. I'm so glad you're here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, Jennifer's doubling the warp threads. Okay. All right. 10-2 mercerized cotton and lipstick. Black will be the weft. Make a handbag and just stuff for fabric. I like it. Excellent. You carry on, Jennifer. You got this. There we go. Jody says, I'm an aggressive beater. So I have to watch myself. Okay, you know what this makes me think of though, Jody, is that when I taught my in-person class recently, I had six students and one of them, I'm sure I told you the story. One of them, her name was Chris, ironically enough. And uh, and Chris, whereas most people would have done one inch, she's done like like a third of an inch. Like she like talk about aggressive beater. And so somewhere along, we had four, four sessions. And somewhere along like session three, session two or three, I was like, you know, Chris, just as an idea, you could kind of place the beater bar instead of really, you know, putting your back into it, smashing it. And she looks me dead in the eye. She's like, but what would be the fun of that? I'm getting all my aggressions out. I was like, then you carry on sister. You just, you smash, smash away. She was having so much fun. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. So I understand aggressive beaters. I got you. That's uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. 
Um, let, yeah, uh, sure, Anne, of course. Very concerned that mine wasn't coming out as equal square. Don't, uh, you know what? I wouldn't even worry, Anne. I would just, uh, you just go for it. I think there are times that we can really get um, caught in the details of a project, which is totally fine. I'm not saying the details are not uh, worthy of your time and attention. They absolutely are to a point. At a certain point, you're like, I'm just going to weave it and enjoy it. I mean, that's, you know, so I give you permission, Anne. Don't worry about the squares. Don't, uh, when it goes through the washer and dryer, a lot of sins will be forgiven. I, I promise. Yes. Hello, Deb Mishiznik. So you have the best last name. That's awesome. I probably butchered it, but you have the best last name for sure. Uh, for the Pacific time zone. That is awesome. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Kim used the eight, four and said it changed a lot in the wash. It really eight, four. It has some definite um, strengths and weaknesses for sure, but it gets really nice and cushy in the washer and dryer. So I'm glad you had that good experience. Don't want to slow as always. I address the loom hopefully the next day or two. You got time. No worries. Now the problem is where did I put my notes? <laughs> Dawn, I got you. If you need help, you just reach out. Uh, Sue Ann says, don't often weave with 8.4. Love how soft and thick it is after finishing. Undulating tool is great fun. Yay. I'm glad you had a good experience and that was uh, very fun for you. Hello, Jody Ward. Uh, let's see. So late work for an ambulance company had a run. Oh, no worries. I didn't know you worked for an ambulance company. Wow. That sounds like a high pressure job. So it's a good thing you're a weaver to balance that out, right? Low pressure weaving, high pressure. Yeah. We're glad you're here, Jody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ernie says, I love tools that don't have a sharp 45 degree line. They're very forgiving about the beat. Absolutely. That's uh yes. Ernie, I'm with you for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. City's using a four shaft table loom. Probably crazy doing just one. No, no, no. I fully support you doing one napkin, Cindy. That is, that is amazing. We, uh, we're, we're with you. You do your napkin. That's awesome. Uh, Carol says that the fiber fuzz is sticking straight out of the warp and eventually the hair on my arms stick up. The loom has become, what is it? A Van de Graaff generator. Boy, see, here's what I think. Everyone is much smarter than I am. I don't know what a Van de Graaff generator is. That's uh, is that is that one of those that that intentionally creates the electric electricity? Is that what that is? <laughs> I love all you smart people. That is awesome. That is uh, wonderful. Cynthia, listen, to me, Cynthia, listen to me. <laughs> Cynthia says she agrees. She's loving it. She doesn't need to refer to the pattern. No, visually, you can just follow right along, right? Yeah. That is awesome. Okay. Carol says, I threw my weft plan right out the window as the plan wasn't working. Yeah. Now it's random. I like it better. I like that. Dawn says, I'm afraid you can't help. I'm going with a different draft and yarn. Plan my project. Now I just need to track down those notes. You got it, Dawn. We'll just cheer you on then. Okay. Speaking of weaving, I think we should do some weaving. Let me, <laughs> I have just, I have just crap everywhere. It's just, it's, uh, you know, there are times I feel like at one point I should put a camera on at about, um, about nine ten So you can see the frantic, uh, excitement that's happening over here. Okay. <laughs> Get things out of the way. All right. Okay. Here we are. Welcome. Let's talk about this project. So this is, um, uh, um, what's it called? Hand painted, hand dyed. This is a hand tied warp, hand painted warp. Someone needs to help me. Someone clarify, please. The difference between hand painted and hand dyed. Is if it's dyed, that means it's dunked into something. And if it's painted, that means with a paintbrush. Someone clarify for me, please, because I don't want to be using the wrong terminology. Um, this is a beautiful done for me warp from uh, Amanda Baxter over at Shiny Dimes. Shout out to Amanda. She is amazing. Hand painted. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. See, Ellen is, I, we'd be lost without Ellen for sure. So, Here's what I did. I took her um, hand painted warp and then I wanted to have something else with it. So I took a solid color. It's all on eight two. I gotta be honest though. I'll be very curious to see how it weaves up because um, you can feel with your fingers. The eight two is uh, Aurora earth from Jody. Thank you so much, Jody. Um, and it is a little finer. It is a little different texture and it is a little, just a touch smaller than the, um, than the eight two from uh, Amanda. So, We'll see how that works out in the wash. I think it's all going to be fine. But as I was dressing the loom, I thought that's so interesting that the textures are just slightly different and the size just a touch different. So we'll see. I think I'll have it kind of um, 
all mixed in together well enough, then it won't be a problem. So, okay. Here's where I am. Uh, I, um, this was part of the challenge is that uh, I got it all um, through the heddles yesterday or the day before. And I knew this morning all I had to do was wind it um, into the loom today before live at the loom. And I thought, oh, that won't take me long. Wrong. This took me, this took me much longer, about uh, more than twice as long as I thought it would take. Uh, mostly because I had, um, you know, I, I warped the yarn. I, whew, words. <laughs> I dressed the loom from front to back. So I went through the read first. And so what I did was, you know, I didn't have to measure the hand painted warp on my warping board, but I did have to measure the solid. So I had like two warps that I'm kind of trying to, they're trying to merge together, like on the highway, like that kind of thing. Um, boy, it was a hot mess. <laughs> and I thought for sure I was going to snap a couple threads. I didn't thankfully. However, let's just say that I, you know, you start out with the method that you use, right? Here's how I do this. I'm going to wind it into the loom. Great. And you're like, okay, it's not working. Plan B. Awesome. I, folks, I was like at plan D or F by the time I got done. <laughs> I was there with the fingers, just like, just going through it, which I always tell students, don't do that. Don't, mm -mm. but that's what it came down to. I was like, okay, by hook or by crook, I'm going to get this project into the loom before live at the loom, because I wanted to show you a little bit of weaving. Now, right before I hit the, uh, record the go live button, I happened to look down below the loom because I have no idea how it's tied up. It's all crazy. I don't remember what project I used on here last, but my tie ups are nuts. So we're just gonna play with a little bit of plain weave just to get us started. Just a sampling, we'll call this a sampling. And uh, and then as I get into it, we'll uh, we'll go from there. We'll, my, my plan is to have this be a combination of uh, plain weave and twill. I'm gonna find some kind of fun, very, oh, look at the, look at the balloons. I don't see, I don't know. I don't, I, I swear I keep turning off the button and it keeps coming on. I don't know. It's just a little, just to make sure you're staying awake, folks. I have random balloons that come up over the screen. Okay, so here is what I have available. I had plans to wind a different bobbin. That didn't happen. So I have an 8-2 in a lighter. You can see it's a little bit lighter. Brown, this is like a dark chocolate. This is like a milk chocolate. Uh, so we're going to just see what this looks like. All right. Enough talking. Let's weave. Let's do it. Put this in my boat shuttle. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I have this set at, um, 24, 24 ends per inch for eight, two, uh, mostly cause that's, that was part of the recommendation from Amanda. So we'll see. And I know a lot of you are eight, two people, which is awesome. Um, so let me know what you typically if you're going to do kind of a, let's say a twill, let's say it's a twill spacing. What do you usually go with? Connie says she loves the balloons. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I love that though. Connie made a note. She said, I think that plane would be great because it'll show the color better. I totally agree. I think when you have a hand painted warp or some kind of yarn in the warp that you really want to highlight, you have to be very careful about the scale of your yarn and your pattern just to make sure that it's not, you don't want to cover up any of the beautifulness of the, uh, warp yarns. I know it's not really a word, but you get the idea. All right. So here we go. Let me see where I left off here. I left off right there. Now, uh, you can see my pattern, right? So what I did was I made sure that all of my Brown, uh, uh stripes were all one inch. And then I varied the stripes of the hand painted. So I've got a half inch, one inch, two inch, one inch, half inch. Like this is kind of how I don't know. I was feeling like in, uh, uh, you know, some kind of a geometrical, I, you know, whatever, you know, where the wind blows you. Okay, here we go. Now, here's something to note is that while ultimately I'm going to throw in a little bit of twill here and there, I did not worry about floating selvage, not for this one. Uh, I just didn't. We'll see if I change my mind. We'll see if I really get into the twill and I really need the floating selvages, then I'll add them later because you can do that. You can add them kind of midstream if you want. But for now, I'm like, I'm just gonna, just gonna do it. So that, uh, that makes the whole kind of weaving goes a little faster, I guess. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll say that, right? Okay. So, uh, Carol says twill, this is for an eight two. Carol, your twill is 36 or 48 ends per inch. That sounds really, really close. My friend, is that for an eight two? Clarify, please. Uh, let's see. Connie says, I like a 15 dent. 
Oh, 15 ends per inch for 8.2. I like it. Sue Ann says typically sets 8.2 at 24 for a twill, maybe 20 for a scarf. So a little kind of, um, I don't want to say floatier, but you know, a little, a little drapier. That's the word. Drapier. That's the word. Yes. Scott says he sets his 8.2 at 20 to 22 for a twill, but I beat like a wild man. So I set the weave along at 24. I'm still getting 28 picks per inch. Wow. You do like to lean in, don't you, Scott? That's all right. Carol says use the 12 dent and oh, a 22. Oh, that makes more sense. So you're using a 22. Is that a cotton, Carol? And you do 36 ends per inch. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Trying to, Sam's trying to help me. A softer hand. That's what it is. Yes. Drapier. Softer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, so my uh, warp not going to be all that glamorous, depending on if I'm lifting one and three or two and four, it's the same colors. But I do want to do a little bit so I can show you um, what that looks like with just a little plain weave in the same size yarn. So we can kind of look at that. Here's, here's part of what I want to do, which I think would be really fun is, um, by the way, I have no set plans for this fabric. It's not, I, I have no idea. I'm just going to weave. So because of that, I'm going to change the colors as I go, because you see how my uh, warp the hand painted, it goes through all these cool colors. It was called like maple something. I don't have it with me. Maple leaf something. It's a fall color. So it's got um, golds and greens and blues and rust color. And I want to try to kind of mix up the weft and not quite match the colors as they change, but play with that. That'd be fun, right? That's what I'm thinking. That is the craziness that I am about at the moment. By the way, just a little kind of a tip if you um, if you'd like one for your plain weave is that I tend to always coordinate what side my uh, shuttle is on with where my feet are. So if my shuttle is on the left side, I tend to stomp on the treadle that's on the left down below. Same thing for the right. So. Uh, so as I'm talking with you, with you lovely, beautiful people, then it's, uh, I don't get distracted. And it's simple enough that I know where I am. See, just, just little, just little things. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know if you have any kind of, uh, plain weave or, uh, you know, any tricks that, uh, you'd like to share. Uh, let's see. Cynthia says she likes it at 24 or something like that, like for a towel. Yep. Perfect. Carol says tartan fabric making yarn. I think sewing thread, fine. Ooh, that would not be my idea of a good time, Carol. No, no. Um, she says, Carol says, eight to yarn be like weaving the tree trunks compared to what I'm used to. Wow. Okay. Gemma says, I figure if I let my niece or my mom on the loom, I would let them do a bit of simple twill. It's a plain weave. Yeah. 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 yeah thank you. Uh, Carol was saying that the hand painted warp is uh, gorgeous. I can't wait for you to see more of it too. Um, I don't, I didn't put her information up. But if you go to shiny dime fibers, um, I don't know, Lori, are you handy? Can you actually put up, um, her website and I'll share that. It's, uh, she is based out of, uh, the Bloomington area of Indiana. Okay. Uh, but she does her stuff is gorgeous. I know Ellen uses a lot of her, uh, hand painted warps, which is so fun. I mean, they're really, her sense of color is unbelievable. It's so fun. So I am hoping we're kind of talking. We may do a little, we may do a little coordination, Amanda Baxter and I. We'll see. Stay tuned. And uh, there'll be more information, probably more information coming. Uh, let's see. Gemma says she downloaded the treadling counter on my iWeaveIt app. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Do you, I feel like um, the I Weave It's kind of a theme these days. Is that, is, Lori, is that what you just got? The I Weave It program? Is that right? How do you guys like that? The folks that use it for, um, for planning. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Carol says she was um, sold out last week. Oh, Amanda was? I bookmark her. Yes. Shiny Dime Fibers. Yes. Sam asked, you have... Oh, Floating salvage. Thank you. I see. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is the note that Sam left me. Do you have FS with this warp? Okay. There's a lot of other things that could be FS. Let's just say my brain went to other places and I thought, 
I think I'm feeling okay. That's uh, yeah. Floating selvage. Thank you. Thank you. Floating selvage. I don't. Uh, and here's why it's going to be kind of a mix of uh, plain weave and twill. And uh, I think I'm going to be okay. If I decide later, I'll let you know if I put in floating selvage after that. I might. We'll, uh, we'll see. So let me do just a few more and then I'll bring you in and uh, we can discuss. We can discuss further. It looks like I'm going to run out of my bobbin here pretty soon anyway. So that works out just lovely. Okay. Oh, see, that's nice. All right, you guys, hang on. Hang on. I'm tipping you over. Nobody gets seasick. Okay. Can you see? Look at the, uh, that's nice, right? It doesn't, it has like a, just kind of a subtle, subtle little uh, shift there, but you can still see all of the, you'll still be able to see all the colors in the um, hand painted warp. Yeah. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll play with uh, different colors, different browns, golds, greens, blues, whatever. We'll see. We'll kind of, uh, it'll be mostly a color study with a little bit of twill thrown in. That's, that's the plan. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Jody was saying that she loves the eye weave it. That's awesome. I designed four towels on the flight home from Utah last month. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. So I will keep posted. This will be the project du jour for us here at Live at the Loom for I'm sure another uh, week or two. We'll uh, we'll talk all things hand painted warps. Fun, right? Okay. So uh, here's some other things we have to discuss. Is that if you um, if you want to carry on, continue any conversations from here, you want to share your projects, um, wander over to our Acton Creative community. We have a Facebook group. Dun, 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 dun. We have a Facebook group. So um, wander over there and uh, put up pictures. Um, reach out to friends you've met here um, live at the Loom. It's, uh, boy, it's humming. Uh, we're, we're slowly making plans. There's going to be some kind of a, a party in May just to celebrate that the group is going strong. It is, it's amazing. It's, uh, I've been very, very impressed. So don't forget to do that. Answer the two questions. Yes, I knew Sam was going to chime in. I love that. Answer the two questions to get in. It's, it's two questions, right? Yeah. Answer the questions, and we'll uh, and we'll welcome you with open arms. Come on over. And if you are uh, loving all of the acting creative stuff and you want to do more, 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 um, join the Action Creative Insiders. I wanted to make a note too that part of you know it's a monthly membership, and you kind of pick your tier for what kind of perks and extras that you want each month. But more than that, um, the Action Creative Insiders. Are, uh, are helping me purchase some new equipment for, um, I'm gonna be re-recording, re-recording, well, re-recording a class and making a new class. And the equipment that I'm gonna use for that is all because of the Action Creative Insiders. So thank you so much for being part of that community and, uh, and being part of the membership is really, it's really amazing. And let's see, where else do we have to share today? Oh. Acting Creative, uh, exper or sorry, Acting Creative. <laughs> the a Hand Woven Experience episode uh, for this week is all about balance. Mm, we'll do a little yoga. We'll sit on one leg. We'll do some ohms. It's all about balance because I feel like as weavers, we use that word balance a lot. Tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like there's plenty of opportunities when we say this is balanced this or balanced that. So in this week's episode, uh, it's just called balance and weaving. And I take three instances of when we use the word balance to um, describe certain scenarios in weaving. And um, part of what I wanted to um, make a note of is that um, sometimes balance uh, is just a description. It's not, it's not a judgment. <laughs> is that it doesn't, it's not all weaves have to be balanced. Not all twills have to be balanced. It doesn't have to be balanced. It's just a description. So please do not put that extra pressure on yourself that it has to be, you know, X, Y, and Z because it doesn't, doesn't have to be. Uh, and lastly, if you aren't yet part of um, the, listen to me, part of, see, been a day, talking too fast, going too much, going too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love notes. If you aren't yet getting our weekly love notes, Every Wednesday, I send you a little, um, just a little story from me to let you know I'm thinking about you and I provide links to whatever the free content is for that week so that you have like a direct shot to see exactly what uh, what is happening at Acting Creative because I want to make sure that 
uh, I make it as easy as possible because I try to put out really good stuff and I hope that it'll be helpful for you. Whew. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We did it, right? We had, uh, we had, this was a really good session in spite of me being a complete spaz. So thank you. That's mostly because of you. <laughs> yep. Thank you, friends, for, uh, you know, helping me through live at the loom. You're such an understanding bunch and uh, that makes all the difference. Let's see next week. Uh, yeah, I'll be, is that true? Yeah. Next week. I'll be right back here. Uh-huh. Ooh, yes. Next week. This will be uh week three of the weave along next week where we'll be weaving. It's my favorite week. It is the best. Your homework will be to weave next week, which is awesome. So mark your calendars next Thursday, same same time, same place, all of the stuff. And I will be right back here and we will catch up and uh, I'll have some progress done on my hand painted warp project. That will be really fun. So you know what your homework is for this week, right? Spend a little time, do something just for you, friends, not for partners, kids, neighbors, friends, just for you. A little creativity just to feed the soul, right? Start a project, finish a project, weave some undulating twill, pet your yarn, whatever you need to do to uh, give yourself a moment to be creative just for you. All right, friends, next Thursday, I'll be right back here, hopefully much calmer and uh, and much more prepared. That's that's what we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed there. Have a wonderful week, right? Happy weaving. <laughs>